This old man does more damage than you think. Brax, he's a support character. Yes. I'm pretty sure that most people know that Welt is good, but I'm also pretty sure that I ate breakfast this morning and there's absolutely no evidence of me leaving my room. Anyways, I've been extensively testing Welt and this dude is complicated. There's so much nuance that goes into everything to do with him. I tested speed versus attack, effect hit rate, building him as a support that removes enemy breathing privileges, building him as a DPS that removes enemy breathing privileges, probably everything you could possibly do in this game. And now I know so much that by the end of this guide, you're going to have a PhD in Weltology. An imaginary PhD. You might even call it an imaginary PhD in imaginary. Anyways, if you want to see some of the testing when new characters launch or just come hang out, make sure to follow my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Braxophone. And with all that being said, let's get into the video. My name is Braxophone, and this is my ultimate wealth guide. So in the other game Welt comes from, his power is kind of one of the greatest threats to the entirety of humanity. So in this game, to scale him down, they gave him gray hair. When I tell you how insanely powerful his character is, I am not exaggerating. Welt is the premier turn manipulation character in Honkai Star Rail, a turn-based game. <laughs> First off, he's imaginary type, which is rare at the release of the game, but also his entire kit revolves around slowing and stopping enemies. His skill is a three hit bounce with a base chance to slow enemies that it hits. The scaling on it seems low until you look at his talent, which deals extra damage to enemies that are slowed. What this does is almost double Welt's total damage against enemies that are just slowed or imprisoned. If you're in single target and against a boss and they're slowed and you have a level eight skill and talent, you're dealing 63% of his attack three times and 52.5% of his attack another three times to one enemy. This is before all the multipliers go off, but if you think about it, that's almost doubling his damage just as a passive. Though this character does have support capabilities, he's able to dish out absurdly high damage for not being built for it. And that's basically his role, a damage dealer with support capabilities, or a supporter with damage dealing capabilities. It's the same thing. Using Walt's skill is something that you're gonna wanna do if enemies are already slowed, or if you need to slow enemies. So basically, all the time. You rarely want to use his basic attack because of how much more damage skill does and how much value slowing enemies actually provides. So you might be thinking, well, Brax, if he wants to skill all the time, wouldn't he take up the damage dealer skill points? Wouldn't that be bad? So this is the cool part. This is a really hard thing to theory craft, but it basically works like this. You're constantly pushing back and delaying enemy attacks. In a way, this almost makes Welt like a preservation character, where you take less damage as a result of enemies not being able to take action as often. This also means that your healers or preservation units that would need to shield and heal you often actually don't have to use as many skill points in the first place. It may not compensate for all of the other points that Welt wants, but in my testing, I found that his skill point usage isn't really a huge problem because you get so many extra turns to attack and rack up points before enemies can even make you need to heal. And all of this is without even talking about his ultimate, which deals a solid amount of Welt's attack to enemies, can proc his talent, and also has a base chance to imprison enemies. Enemies who get imprisoned have their action delayed by a ton. And with his ult costing 120 energy, you can pretty comfortably keep enemies debuffed. For some reason, it does have two hits though, even though it only mentions one. Both hits can trigger his talent as well, so it's a lot of extra damage, but I, I still don't really get why they worded it that way. But I'm not gonna complain. The Dawei XP's technique outside of battle also reduces enemy speed and imprisons enemies upon entering combat, which makes him great at the start of boss fights too, and also allows him to deal maximum damage right off the bat. So are you sold yet? Because if you're not, let me tell you about his traces, which are also broken. Retribution makes Welt like Mona, but not in the overspending way. After using his ultimate, he has a base chance to apply a debuff that increases enemy damage taken by 12%. This means that any character on your team that attacks an affected enemy also deals 12% bonus damage. On top of that, Judgment gives him 10 energy back after using his ultimate, which makes his ultimate technically only cost cost 110. And then there's also punishment, which is what I wish he'd do to me. It makes him deal 20% more damage to enemies with weakness broken. And believe me, because his skill is a bounce one, if enemies are weak to imaginary, they will have their weakness broken. When you're leveling him up, prioritize his skill and talent with his ultimate afterwards. Eventually you'll want them all leveled, but his talent and skill are where the bulk of his damage is for now. Now to be completely clear, he does have some downsides. Like for example, him slowing down enemies does not actually slow the cycles of Forgotten Hall or Memory of Chaos.
DOS. He's not as much of a cheat code for timed content as I wish he was. But luckily, he dishes out such solid damage that he can still find a place in those kinds of teams to clear the hardest content. But regardless of this, after all of this extensive playtesting and spreadsheets, Welt could honestly be argued one of the strongest units in the entire game. And so next up, let me show you how to build him to be the strongest he can be. First off, for early game players, you can give him anything that has attack on it. You'll definitely want effect hit rate later, but early on, you're usually able to hit your debuffs on enemies with him, and it's not a huge issue. At Trailblazer rank 40 though, you're gonna start farming for relics, and here's where it gets a little bit complicated. So Walt was kind of a royal pain in the ass to figure out, because he has so many different stats that he can benefit from. Myself and my friend Low Priority spent time testing and theorycrafting him, and after testing most stats, we came up with a build that takes advantage of his full kit and also outputs a lot of damage. There's two sets that I recommend over any others, with the first being Wastelander of Banditry and the other being Eagle of Twilight Line. Wastelander is the premier imaginary set, and it functions like Blizzard Strayer in Genshin Impact. It essentially gives you a bunch of crit rate and damage against enemies that are imprisoned, which will be a lot of the time with Welt. Because Welt deals such solid damage even with a support-centric build, it ends up actually being worth it to try to invest into some crit on him. You won't be able to get ratios like your standard or damage dealers, but the 2B set already gives him imaginary damage. It's only two more pieces to give him an insane amount of crit value. Now, if you don't like that one, Eagle of Twilight Line is the wind set, and it moves your character action forward by 25% after using your ultimate. If you're really set on imprison uptime, you want to make sure he can generate as much energy as possible as quickly as possible, and Eagle will help you get to attack sooner, meaning that you get your next ultimate sooner as well. I definitely recommend Wastelander, but Eagle is a decent option if you don't mind losing some damage for better uptime. And as one bonus tip, you can mix up two-piece sets like two-piece wild wheat if you need to. Now before I go over stats, you might be wondering why I don't recommend the meteor set, which has break effect. For those of you who don't know, break effect does actually affect the amount of time that enemies are imprisoned. Now obviously Welt could take advantage of the four-piece fairly often since his skill can shred through toughness, but break effect isn't really as worth it as you might think. In really early on content, break effect can actually be pretty solid because enemies aren't as fast as they are later on. But by the time you get to really late game content, it's going to be a lot harder for you to actually get value out of break effect on his imprison. Against average speed enemies with level 80 multipliers, with a break effect rope, so 64% break effect, enemies effectively lose one turn worth of attacks with one break, which seems pretty good. But they only lose two turns worth of attacks after three breaks. The problem is that breaking three times without killing is already unlikely, except in some boss content. Break effect also doesn't apply to the duration of Welt's ult in prison, since it doesn't require a break to imprison enemies. Simply put, it's better to focus on getting more ultimates out of Welt for imprison than it is to hope that you can break enemies' weakness multiple times to make break effect more worth using. Simply put, break effect doesn't give you enough value to be worth running over other stuff. So what would you use instead? Well, let's talk stats, specifically on the body piece. Effect hit rate directly affects how effective your entire kit is. That was so dumb why I write it like that. And you want it to be high so you can imprison and slow enemies and by proxy, increase your damage. You need a lot of it. Here's a cool thing about wealth though. If you build him for crit stats, like crit rate and crit damage, he can dish out absurdly high damage for support. If you do build him crit, your effect hit rate has to be lower. And as an example of what this looks like, here are your chances to land effects on enemies that have 10% resistance without an effect hit rate body piece. Next to those are your chances with an effect hit rate body piece. As you can see, against enemies that only have 10% resistance, it's not as big of a deal. And considering that a lot of enemies don't actually resist effects that hard until you get up to late game, you could make a good argument for building crit on him. I actually play him with crit a majority of the time, and it's a lot of fun. But I do have to swap to effect hit rate against bosses that have more resistance. For example, some bosses even have 50%. Against enemies with 50% resistance, this is what you'd be looking at for your odds to actually land an effect. With effect hit rate, your odds are going to be much higher than without. And the nice thing about that is that it brings some consistency to Welt's play when you bring him into higher end content and makes him a lot better of a supporting character. So because of that, it is honestly just good to have both kinds of pieces. But just know that crit will carry you through most of the game's content, and effect hit rate only comes in handy against really high end stuff like high level simulated universe or forgotten hall. So the best build for Welt is crit or 
effect hit rate on the body, speed boots, imaginary damage sphere, and an energy regen rope. Speed boots are important because they get you one extra attack over three turn cycles, which ends up being a big damage increase because of his extra talent damage. On top of that, because of the extra attack, you get your ultimate sooner. Sphere is just for extra damage, and the rope, as mentioned before, does not actually want break effect. You'd rather have more energy to get your ult up faster for more imprisons. And when it comes to substats, you definitely want to go for crit and effect hit rate the most, but speed and attack are also very good on him. <sighs> This section is way too dank. Anyways, uh, planar ornaments. Pangalactic whatchamacallit is pretty good for the effect hit rate and bonus attack, but you can, as always, use Fleet of the Ageless for more team attack. Highly recommend either one, both are great. You can also go Inert Salsoto if you need the crit. It'll also give him a bit of ult damage bonus as well, and it's a solid choice for ironing out crit stats on him. Just keep that in mind that if you're already ignoring the effect hit rate, like then the 10% from Pangalactic isn't going to be game changing, and you can also just opt for crit if you want to. Now on screen now is all of the build information information summarized. This build allows Welt to dish out super high damage, imprison enemies, and look fly as fuck while doing it. Now, as I mentioned before, I prefer effect hit rate, but crit welt can actually be super strong. So in the next section, I'm gonna go over when you would play effect hit rate versus crit by ranking light cones. All right, so here's the deal with light cones. Basically, a lot of the Nihility ones kinda suck. Unless you're Welt, in which case they're pretty sick. I'll show you damage comparisons at the end, so stick around if you wanna see how everything ranks. First thing I wanna do is tell you about his best free-to-play option, which is actually a three-star light cone called Loop. Loop gives Welt a big damage bonus based on if enemies are slowed, which they always will be. This damage bonus is so high at S5 that it actually beats out some of the four-star light cone options. Now, obviously, in the name of the world is going to be the best. It's made to work with his kit and has high base stats. It doesn't affect the effect hit rate of his ultimate though, so it's worth keeping that in mind. But even with the effect hit rate only applying to his skill, you can make a strong argument to build crit with this cone and massively increase his damage output. If you do use this and have decent effect hit rate substats, definitely try to build crit body on him here. Now one of the best Nihility cones is Resolution Shines as Pearls of Sweat, which lets you shred enemy defense. This helps your entire team, so even though Welt's personal damage won't be its highest, you'll still be dealing more overall damage than with a lot of other light cones, and I recommend this one over most other light cones in the game. It's super solid. Another great option is Good Night and Sleep Well, which gives a ton of damage bonus based on debuffs, which Welt happens to apply quite a few of on his own. We Will Meet Again is pretty solid for overall damage, but unfortunately, after testing, it doesn't work like most of us would hope. It deals bonus damage on basic attack or skill, but the damage bonus does not Rock Welt's talent for bonus damage, so unfortunately it does fall a bit behind other options. Eyes of the Prey is actually one of his best options. It gives effect hit rate, which means that you can actually build crit on his body piece. Building crit on Welt is a massive damage increase, and I highly recommend doing it if you're using Eyes of the Prey. Void at S5 can also be okay early on, but it doesn't match the damage that loot puts out, and it only works for the first three turns anyways. Here are some weapon rankings based on initial calculations. This is how the different weapons stack up against each other for Welt's personal damage. Note that Resolution Shines as Pearls of Sweat is only calculated for Welt's personal damage, meaning that it is much more valuable than shown on the chart. How valuable it is depends on your team and if you're running another strong damage dealer. Because if you are, then it's going to be a top choice. Welt has so many light cones available to him that it's kind of hard to go wrong, but hopefully this helped you pick one to use. So building teams for Welt is probably the hardest part of building Welt in general. The biggest issue that Welt has is that he's really skill point hungry and he wants to use his skill as often as possible to dish out as much damage as possible, get his ult faster, and slow down enemies. His skill is incredibly valuable and sometimes you could even argue that it's more important than some of your damage dealer's skills. But with that said, I'm going to try to give you guys some team building tips even if he doesn't have a perfect team at the moment. So as mentioned before, Welt is extremely skill point hungry, so he's going to want to eat up a lot of skill points. This means that we have to run at least two characters that are pretty flexible with skill points so that way you can actually go positive and figure out your fourth team member. One character that doesn't always go negative on skill points or that can actually generate of quite a few skill points is going to be Pela. Now the reason I like Pela with Welt is actually more than just the skill point thing because Pela has a two turn defense shred that she has from her ultimate and this two turn defense shred is I mean well it's only two turns. However if you're playing with Welt you can actually extend the duration of that by a fair bit. It's not like you're turning it from two turns into three turns but by delaying enemies attacks 
attacks, you're effectively delaying their turn, which means that the buff can last longer, or I guess the debuff on the enemy lasts longer. That, that's technically correct. Enemies will have to take two turns, or basically two actions, not counting extra actions, to burn through all of the turns of debuff that they have on them, which effectively means that Pela can have a lot better uptime on her ultimate by playing with Welt. And this applies to other debuffs as well, like if you are lowering an enemy's attack or something, by delaying when they can actually move, you're delaying when they can take their turn, and you are therefore extending the value of whatever debuff you've applied to them. And that's why Pela and Welt get along really well, outside of Pela not needing all of the skill points, unless you're against an enemy that is constantly buffing themselves. Now, another character that you can run that is not super skill point heavy, that works really well with Welt, is going to be Fire MC. Fire MC is a character that has an enhanced basic attack, meaning that they can dish out pretty okay damage for a preservation unit without actually taking a skill point. Now, granted, you do get your enhanced basic attack by taking other actions, and one of the actions you will need to take on Fire MC is taunting enemies and putting up your shield with their skill. However, you don't actually have to use their skill every turn, and that's something I really like about them, is that they generate a lot of skill points for your team because you don't have to taunt all the time. But I think another thing that a lot of people overlook is Welt as a preservation unit. Now, I know it says Nihility down here. That's that's not the point. But the thing is that when Welt is delaying enemy attacks, he's effectively mitigating the damage that you would have otherwise taken. If an enemy attacks once in your two-turn cycle, as opposed to twice in your two-turn cycle, then you're effectively removing damage from that cycle. Now, that damage may show up later, but if you kill the enemy before they can do that damage, then you are effectively making them lose turns. By keeping enemies imprisoned and then pairing that with Fire MC, whose shields are not super strong, but who has a taunt and who has shields that refresh very often, odds are that you're going to be able to preserve your team a lot better than you might think with this damage unit that has support capabilities and with Fire MC. Alternatively though, if you don't want to run Fire MC, you also have the option to run an Abundance character instead. You could play someone like Natasha, and Welt alone will be enough to mitigate some of the damage that you would take. This won't work in high-end Forgotten Hall where you can be one-shot by enemies that buff themselves a ton, but if you have someone like Pela that can remove the buffs, it's not as big of a deal. And Natasha is also a character that goes skill point positive, which means that she'll be generating skill points, Pela will be generating skill points, and Welt will be a happy boy that can use the skill whenever he wants. Now, the hardest part, in my opinion, of Welt is figuring out the fourth slot, though. Realistically, you could throw up any other character in Natasha or Pela's spot, and as long as they are generating skill points, they can work pretty well with Welt because Welt is hungry for them. However, in the fourth slot, you have to choose if you want to go a skill point positive or skill point negative character, and because Welt isn't a dedicated damage dealer, even though he does a ton of damage, you can still opt to run another damage dealer. Maybe that would be Serval, or maybe that would be someone like Zilla. Both of those characters are really skill point hungry though, like Welt. And so you run into the issue of not being able to generate enough skill points constantly in order to pop off. But here's the really, really cool part, okay? I explained this earlier on in my video, but by delaying enemy attacks, you get more attacks before the enemy can actually get up and hit you back. What this essentially means is that by delaying enemy attacks, you have the ability, if you choose to, to generate more skill points before they get up, and still within that window between them attacking you and you attacking them, you could go skill point positive. Is it a damage loss to use Sila's basic attack sometimes, or to use Welt's basic attack sometimes? Yeah, it is. But if you get to do it twice before the enemy attacks you back, you can still make an argument that it is better to do. The only place this doesn't apply is in something like Forgotten Hall, where the cycles are constantly moving anyways, regardless of how much you slow down the enemy. And in that case, it does get really tough, and you have characters like Arlen, who can kind of help you out in that regard. Arlen's damage is not something to write home about in terms of how comparable it is to top end units, but Arlen is a pretty strong unit regardless, and with someone like Welt, Welt will be able to use his skill a lot to deal a ton of personal damage, and Arlen will also be able to deal a ton of personal damage because he doesn't eat a skill point when he uses his skill, and that is very valuable. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that this is the best team because honestly, I don't think this is the best team at all. But these are all characters that do have a synergy with him in one way or another, and it's worth noting. Now, one simulated universe team that I ran that I had a lot of success with was Welt, March 7th, Clara, and then Sila. And a lot of people are going to immediately, like, I, I know what you're thinking. But Brax, you can't put Clara in a team with Welt because Welt imprisons enemies and they don't attack as much. Keep in mind that simulated universe, even though bosses do have enrages, they are so long and, and hard to get to that you could argue simulated universe is barely a timed combat sequence. So what I had a lot of success in simulated universe with was running Welt and March as a way to mitigate basically all of the damage that you would possibly even think about taking over the course of the simulated universe. Because what you do is you throw out March's shield on someone like Clara, and then you permanently and infinitely stun 
enemies with wealth and also freeze them with March. And basically they never get a turn. And when they do get a turn, they punch Clara, which means that you get more damage back. I did not have to run a healer with this team. I did pick abundance buff for sustainability and I was able to clear world three level two with this without a dedicated healer. And that was actually pretty solid. You can also sub in someone else for Zilla, but this was just something that I wanted to talk about because I think a lot of people are averse to running Walt and Clara together. And I do believe that in Forgotten Hall, this is suboptimal, but in simulated universe, Clara is such a strong unit and Walter is such a strong unit and March is such a strong. I mean, honestly, they're all so strong that in simulated universe, though it may not be the fastest thing, it is definitely sustainable and definitely can hold you over. Now, one other synergy that Walt has is with Asta, and I don't personally use this, but it is something that you should definitely take note of. Asta is able to buff your speed for your entire team, and that speed buff is also really nice because it basically allows you to move more before enemies do. And wouldn't you guess it, Welt slows down enemies so you can move more before the enemies do. Basically, if you combine these characters, you have even more opportunity to hit the enemy before they can hit you back. And Asta also has an attack buff, which Welt benefits from because he also deals like high personal damage. So using these two together actually isn't that bad. The only downside of using Asta and Welt together is that to get Asta's buff, she definitely wants to use her skill. And that can be hard to do when Welt is hogging all of the points. I do want to acknowledge one other way of playing Welt though, and this is sort of as a carry. And I find that this way is actually really fun and honestly not that bad compared to what a lot of other people thought it would be. So basically you would just run like a normal hyper carry team with someone like Tingyun, who I totally have. Uh, I'll put Asta here, but I'm gonna pretend it's Tingyun. And basically between all of these units, you're not gonna take that much damage because Welt is going to delay enemies so much that it's going to end up being like pretty dang strong. Instead of Tingyun, who this totally really is, you also have Pela, who we talked about earlier, who can actually extend her defense buff artificially. And overall, Welt can output a ton of damage and hyper carry Walt is viable even if it's not viable in the highest level forgotten hall in a lot of content it's very very good so as I said team building for Walt is not a perfect science and it has a lot more to be desired as we get new units in the game but I did want to go over different ways to build them and different teams you could throw together and character synergies just so that way you have an idea of who he works well with so I hope this helped next up let's talk about his Eidolons though because oh my god this dude is insane with Eidolons I will be the first to say that Welt doesn't need Eidolons to be good. All of the calculations we did to figure out how absurd his damage is was done at E0, but his Eidolons do make him kind of broken. So let's talk about him. His E1 makes it so that his ultimate enhances his abilities. You basically get an extra hit for your skill or for your basic attack. And after testing it, it does not proc his talent. So it's a decent damage gain, but it's not as insane as some people think. Next up is E2. And the reason E1 doesn't work with his talent is probably because of of this Eidolon, which makes Welt gain three energy every time his talent is triggered. This basically means that every skill on slowed enemies is an extra nine energy, which is actually insane. It also applies to when he uses his ult and triggers the talent twice. So this Eidolon is broken. I, I don't really know what else to say. After Calx, if you used ER rope against three enemies, you can get your ult up every two turns with Welt. This basically means enemies are never moving. But with that said, I actually like this Eidolon as a replacement for ER Rope, because without an ER Rope, you can still get your ult once every three turns if you take into account his traces and other sources. This means that you can run Attack Rope instead or something like Break Effect if you want to and see massive damage gains. E2 is a crazy upgrade for him and I cannot stress this enough, this might be his best Eidolon. Now his E3 is skill and basic attack upgrades, which is just more damage, nice and simple. E4 is also nuts because it drastically increases his skill's base chance to inflict slow, which can also make crit body piece much more realistic for later content. This means that building crit on Welt is easier to do and more viable. E5 is also a big damage increase, leveling his ult and talent, and E6 is yet another nutty damage increase, with Welt getting an extra slash on his skill, meaning an extra talent proc, meaning significantly more damage, and with E2, another three energy. Let Hoyumers cook! This unit is crazy at E0, but if you get his Eidolons over time, he becomes much stronger. I can't say anything like I recommend you get these because he's in the standard pool. So obviously it's gonna be really hard, but definitely do not feel bad if you get his Eidolons for him because they are insanely good value. And this unit is crazy with them. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I really think that people like Welt and know that he's good, but I don't think people understand exactly how strong Welt is. In the lore, he's already incredibly powerful and nobody's arguing with that. But in Honkai Star Rail, as a unit that's able to slow down enemy attacks and basically mitigate damage that you would 
have otherwise taken had you not slowed them down and also dish out a ton of damage at the same time, I would not be surprised if he was ranked one of the best units in the entire game months down the line once the meta has settled. And so with all of that being said, this was my Welt guide and thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something about Welt. I hope it helped you build him. I hope your Welt just obliterates planets and all content now. You pull up to what English NPCs call Jarillo 6 and then you just blow up the entire planet because you used your E skill one time. But like, you're not gonna be mad at him because he's a gilf. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel for more. Uh, come check out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash I appreciate it. Bye everyone, bye, have a good time.